Good morning. My name is Donald Green, and welcome to well, how how do um, how do our eyewitness accounts define us? Um, the eyewitness account is something that is usually taken as fact. It's seen as incorruptible. In fact, a lot of media and news channels have sparked up because of eyewitness accounts because we see them as completely accurate. And in fact, they are of value to authorities because if there's ever a crime and there's an eyewitness, they can go and ask that eyewitness what, they've, what they can remember from that crime and if that can help them. So what's wrong with eyewitness accounts though? Well, they, are, they can be completely made up or fake. For example, when after the, um, the shooting at the YouTube headquarters, there was a news team who went across the street to one of the restaurants and they asked people there if they knew anything about it or they were looking for witnesses. What the witnesses gave them was completely false. Not a single one of them knew what was going on or they had, a, had too much confidence and believed that they knew what was going on. So the news team ended up getting absolutely no accurate information from this. And then there's um, people rely way too much on the confidence of the person speaking. You cannot completely acknowledge that the confidence of the person will give them everything. They don't, they might think that they know all the information about the topic, which they probably don't. It's usually like they don't, they never have the bigger picture. They think they do. However, the bigger picture is something that you get from many eyewitness accounts. It's not just one person. Not one person has the entire story. The role of perspective is how we describe certain social, political, and economic events in our, in our own words. So what it basically means is that from light pavement art, <laughs> which you can see from a multitude of different angles. From those different angles, only one person believes that they have it correct. Even though from every other angle, anybody looking at it might think they are correct if none are the wiser. If one person sees it from like the top or some other different point for like an artwork, they might think that their perspective of it is completely correct and they might not believe in anyone else. That is their form of the eyewitness account. The perspective basically describes how we describe the eyewitness account because we might be biased in how we describe it. We might, you like if you send a few people, um, actually, here's a perfect example of that. From one angle, the art piece shows a fish. From the other angle, the art piece shows the turtle. It's the exact same art piece, however, it is completely different from a different perspective or a different point of view. The human response is how we react to it. So an event actually shows us or shows other people how we might react to something. So if there was, let's say, um, like our response is influenced by our opinions. If you grew up in like um, in like a poorer part of town, and you see somebody basically getting arrested for what you think is no apparent reason. You would be angry at the cops because your perspective is that the cops are attacking this man. They are not arresting him for any crime if you do not know of one. So it's basically just like. Um, we believe in what we see. However, we also have we also have um, pre answers to this of how we would respond to something. So, whenever this event or response comes to comes to fruition, we would immediately believe that without any conceivable notion of anything else. There's also the response of the involvement. If two people are arguing about something, you are more likely to defend the person who you believe more in or who you share similar opinions with. If there's a political debate, you would most likely or you would most likely defend or help the person who you believe 
actually benefits you or agrees with you. Our accidental bias. So our accidental bias is how our memory has on how we believe or how we perceive things. Um, the human brain obviously forgets things. However, between 30, like 20 to 30 minutes, you forget more than you would you than in say like five minutes of an event happening. You will forget specific details of the event, but you also immediately forget all the details that you don't see as important. And that brings up another thing because our flashbulb memory is almost like the opposite of that. However, it has its differences. Flashbulb memory is something that we learn. We were never at the event. Flashbulb memory is what when we learn the event. So 9-11 is a great example of this because a lot of people remember where they were on 9-11 even though they weren't actually in New York. They might believe that oh, I was watching TV and just scrolled to the news and just saw the attack, or they might have actually been in New York. Flashbulb memory is something that we remember based on emotion and connectedness. If somebody or a friend was there, then we would remember it more because of that friend. Filling gaps. Our memory likes to fill gaps where we forget things, and this can actually be a detriment to us because we don't, if you forget like um, the skin color of somebody, you might, that might hurt you because if you think that, or I guess if you're a racist, if you forget like the color of somebody's skin when something happens, you might be more inclined to believe that that person is always responsible for this, even though it was somebody completely different simply because your memory is trying to fill the gaps. Cross-race identification is an interesting part of this because it's not really what it sounds like. You don't actually identify with like um, another race based on your memory. If you are in an actual area, you believe more that your race had something to do with this. The summary and solution. The solution is basically that we need to identify that there's an actual bias in eyewitness accounts. In any case, we need to acknowledge that people lie, people describe events with a certain bias, and we forget certain details. But it would also have a, a huge effect on like, the, on like the media because we would have less reliability on media accounts if they were solely going off of just one eyewitness account, like a news channel or something. This would influence how they gain evidence and how they are more, on how it is more valuable to them. And these are my sources. Okay. Um, let me ask you a couple of questions. <clears throat> How valid and reliable are the sources you use, and how do you know which ones to take for? Some of the sources that I used, specifically the one that talked about how eyewitness accounts are specifically biased in their own way, like how the evidence might not add up, or how we rely too heavily on the confidence of the speaker, that served as a backbone, and then I jumped off of that. But it also served as like some of the background evidence. Some of the most of the evidence that I didn't end up using were the specific micro type of stuff. Like it would describe a specific event, and I originally used that in order to gain an understanding on the topic. Not, it wasn't used in order to explain it as a whole. Okay. Um. So. Uh, if you had more time, what additional research would you conduct related to the issue? More, if I had more additional time to research, I would conduct on how our memory actually affects everything. Like how it, like it has a much important part, it has a bigger part in how we perceive and analyze things in our mind. However, I don't think I had enough time to specifically research that. Okay.